Um, you know, when we talk to recruiters, you know, 52% of recruiters say the most difficult part of their job is screening. So it's actually sort of screening people, you know, the stacks of CVs and, and you know, how easy is it for you as organisations to mine your own database of the candidates you already know? You know, very few people put their hand up and say, yeah, we got that sorted, Rob. You know, we, ne we never waste a great candidate. We, we can absolutely nail that. It's very difficult. And the other thing about, you know, sort of identifying uh, the right talent in this sort of sea of CVs and people which are engaging with you is, you know, just how time consuming it is. And, you know, the, the net result is that recruiters are feeling quite overwhelmed. You know, it's, it's, it really is a challenge. And I think if you're going through having to make decisions in six seconds, you know, what do you think is happening? You cannot afford to uh, underscore the fact that even if we try hard not to, there is cognitive bias in making a snap decision. Okay, and that cognitive bias is based on your beliefs and your preferences. So if you're not, you know, if you're being forced to do things at sort of pace, it's going to be a challenge. And if you don't have data at your disposal, and I've very rarely met a recruiter who said, yeah, yeah, we've got all the facts and figures, we know exactly what's working, we know exactly what we're looking for. If you don't have that there, it is relying on you as recruiters to make those types of screening, screening um, decisions. What we tend to rely on, because we don't have this data, is gut feeling. Okay. And, uh, you know, that gut feeling can sometimes be quite wrong. Thinking about AI, you know, what can it do for us? And the, uh, the thing that we don't have a lack of is data, okay? Whether that's data from your ATS, whether it's data from your finance system, if you're using Google Analytics, you know, Glassdoor, you know, wherever it is, we're really sort of facing a sort of a sea of information. There's a lot of, lot of data out there. But um, with all this data, we've still got the challenge of trying to identify who's going to be the right person for the role. And, you know, I put it to you that, um, you know, I'll say it, you know, I think rec recruiting is stuck in the dark ages. When I think back to what I was doing in 1995, I can still have a really relevant conversation in 2018 with somebody about recruiting because fundamentally the, the role of recruitment has not changed. But the, the amount of data and the tools and technologies and the expectations of hiring managers and candidates has significantly changed. If you think about mobile devices, social networks, you know, Glassdoor, LinkedIn, none of this existed in 95 when I was a recruiter. Bring it forward to the present day, we've got all these tools at our disposal, so recruitment processes need to leverage these in the right way to sort of improve efficiencies. And it's been proven um, through various studies that artificial intelligence can actually make recruiting smart, smarter. So it can help you. And, um, you know, this is unfortunately against the backdrop of many studies which, which sort of prove that, um, <laughs> that humans are notoriously bad at, uh, at picking the right applicant. So we're starting from quite an inefficient, volatile, inaccurate way of doing it today. So let's have a look at you know, how, how uh, AI can help. And it's been proven that these algorithms, which sound really scary, can actually drive significant improvements in the process. But Artificial intelligence makes it possible for machines to learn from experience using data and algorithms to mimic human decision making and problem solving. OK? So if that's really the sort of context, let, let's, let's now start looking at, you know, how does this actually apply uh, in the area of, of, of recruiting? So the first question I sort of want to sort of touch on is around, you know, how can AI actually uh, impact um, recruiters' lives in a positive way? You know, how can, it, uh, how can it sort of drive productivity? And, you know, recruiting is a high-touch process. You know, as many, many touches as the candidate goes, goes through a recruitment process. Not only that, it's not just about a recruiter, it's about a hiring manager, it could be about uh, you know, other interviews, HR could be involved. There's multiple stakeholders in that sort of process. And the most, uh, I said it before, the most time consuming part of that recruitment process is actually screening the CVs. So um, the challenge is that recruiters have to screen these CVs. The average, just to give you some sort of, you know, some anecdotal sort of, you know, facts, um, is about 23 hours a week are spent screening CVs for the average recruiter. Okay. 
the majority, so somewhere between 70 and 80% of these CVs are probably not qualified for the role. Okay? So when you look at you know, productivity, if you're spending that amount of time, wasted effort, looking at CVs which are not right, something's fundamentally flawed. Recruiters are faced with the, uh, the ongoing challenge of doing more with less. Very, very rarely do I meet people who say, oh yeah, yeah we're going to go and hire another 10 recruiters. Normally it's about, we need to change the way we're working because you know, I can't hire more headcount, but I'm being asked to deliver more roles. So efficiency is becoming incredibly, uh, productivity is becoming incredibly important. So if AI you know, is able to sort of reduce that sort of, you know, automate those low level tasks, it's effectively going to enable you to do, spend more time on when you're really going to sort of value add. And um, you know, that's, uh, that's something that we'll pick up uh, in a moment. And it's about, it's about effectiveness. It's not about just filling a job. So I think it's fairly easy. I think we'd all agree that you could just say, right, I need to hire an X. Just go and find somebody, offer them a job. They've now filled the job. OK, that's really not adding value. That's not being effective. It's not being effective because you're not really considering about, are they the right fit? You know, are they going to deliver the value that, that you need them to? And again, um, in the Wipro Digital presentation, it was talking about sort of predictive analytics as well. It would be very difficult for you for, as a recruiter, if you're recruiting a couple of hundred people a year, to really be able to track who's working out, who's not working out, without sort of this AI um, capability uh, in the background. Let's, uh, let's sort of dive in um, and talk about you know, three sort of fundamental areas which we think are um, easy to improve or automate through, uh, th through the use of AI. And the first one is, you know, we've, we've, we've talked about it, it's about you know, how, do you, um, how do you use uh, artificial intelligence AI to eliminate those time consuming sort of manual driven sort of process steps? And you want to be able to do that to free up, obviously, your time. And um, you know, a good example, which we see out in the marketplace, is chatbots. So last week, up, up at Manchester at uh, Mark's event for the in-house recruiter live, I was having a really good conversation with a guy called Ian Hamilton, who does recruitment bots. And we were talking about the, the sort of impacts of bots and how bots were being used in recruitment context to really sort of drive down value. And um, we, we know um, JobPal, um, they're, another, they're another vendor who are in the news for doing pretty cool stuff. And you know, they make custom chatbots purely for the purpose of recruiting and engaging candidates. And you know, a couple of you know, sort of anecdotes for you. Kelly OCG use chatbots, and they've been able to um, automate 75% of the frequently asked questions. So as a recruiter, you know, what's your holiday pay and all this sort of stuff? All of this is now managed through an FAQ um, through a chatbot. The other interesting fact that, that Kelly OCG um, talk about is that 64% of the questions that they receive from candidates come outside of office hours. So it would be impossible for you as a recruitment function to man the phones, the emails, you know, whatever it may be, instant messenger, 24 hours a day. It would be ridiculous. So here's a really good example where sort of recruiting chatbots can help engage candidates, give them a better experience, answer their questions, operate you know, when they've got time to engage with your brand outside of your office hours, for example. The next one, and again, I've sort of talked about this, is around sort of you know, analyzing. You know, how do you make sense of all this data that, that you're collecting? And um, the big challenge is around collating this information in the, per in the first place. Artificial intelligence can, can group it together and start putting it into sort of areas for you. Um, but I think the final interpretation of data still lies with, with you guys. There needs to be a human intervention. But all that work which has to happen beforehand, so if you remember the chart about raw data and sort of moving along, you know, getting to a point you can start making some smart decisions. If you can automate you know, all that piece, then fantastic. And then you can spend more time doing the analysis of, of what that is. And um, you know, we, we believe so passionate about this that um, I mentioned Hassan. We actually acquired Hassan's business a year or so ago um, purely to bring artificial intelligence into the smart recruiters platform. And we've launched a, uh, a service called Recruiting Assistant. And you know, effectively what that does is it's supporting you in your recruitment process. It's not replacing you. 
but it's supporting you in uh, surfacing the strongest fit candidates. It's enabling you to uh, automatically um, you know, match candidates that you already know in your database to the jobs before you think to sort of publish it out. And the really key thing is that it, it does that you know, without any bias. You know, an algorithm doesn't care you know, whether you're a black, white, male, female, 20 something or 45 something. Okay? It's much more um, unbiased than, than the recruiter can be, uh, as I've spoken about before. And the final thing is sort of talking about um, prediction. So, um, you know, machine learning can help us get better at predictive outcomes. It won't predict it exactly, as, we, as was spoken about earlier, but it gives you a good suggestion of where roughly you're going to land. So take the golf analogy, you know. If you hit swipe the ball roughly in that direction with that wind, it's going to be roughly near the tee. You can't point, pinpoint exactly where it's going to be. It's going to be in the right sort of area. And um, another thing which, uh, again, looking at AI and give you another example about how this is working in a recruitment context is somebody like Textio. Has anybody heard of Textio? Yeah, a couple of, two or three people have heard of Textio. So if I was to summarize Textio, it's, it's a way of looking at a job description and optimizing it and effectively rewording it so it can have better impact, better conversion rates. So it's, uh, you know, it really is sort of driven by AI and it uh, can analyze how adverts in the past have performed and it can help you rewrite adverts to drive towards the objectives that you're trying to achieve. You know, with, with these chatbots, with Textio, I mean, the technology's out there. You know, the evidence is starting to come in that this stuff's making a difference. So the big question is, well, why isn't everybody doing it? Um, and frankly, it boils down to sort of a couple of things. Um, the first one that I think companies really sort of hesitate over is it's just kind of a, a leap into the dark unknown. So hopefully today, will be shedding some light on this and you can go back informed and actually sort of bring this to life with some of the anecdotes about how it's really work. Um, but most, most organizations are really struggling with data overload. They've got way too many data points. You know, how do I collate this stuff? I just don't know how to make sense and, you know, out of all this. And the other thing is that very often, and we see time and time again that, that, that um, recruitment organizations, uh, in-house recruiters are having to sort of split data across Outlook, Excel, you know, Taleo, their ATS, Avature, their CRM, Tableau, their, you know, their, their data analytics tool. And, you know, trying to get a complete picture is almost impossible. So it was really, you know, really gratifying to see, you know, Hiker and the, the VCAMP uh, approach where they're beginning to aggregate data to start making informed decisions. But, I mean, that, that really comes from the, the, you know, the second challenge is, you know, it's not easy to integrate this stuff, you know. Can you really you know, plug and play Excel and Outlook and you know, Entello and all this other stuff to your existing technologies today? The answer is probably no. So it's only the modern providers or third party products like Tableau are able to kind of bring this, bring this all together for people. And the other area which is, uh, <laughs> it's probably where I've spent most of my time talking over the last three or four months is around compliance. Um, good, old, uh, good old GDPR, so um, Legislation like GDPR is making, making the way that you recruit, the way that you engage, the way that you handle data much more transparent, whether you like it or not. It's, it's happening. So, you know, you need to improve your, your privacy policies. You need to talk about what data you're collecting. You, know, you need to obviously explain what you're using it for. And um, here's, here's where one of the challenges exists with AI is if you are using AI, you know, is it easy to explain in a simple to understand language to a candidate how you're using AI in your recruitment process? And um, I think, you know, I, th I think it's quite challenging. And the, the thing which is kind of more concerning with GDPR is that it expressly forbids you to use, and I'm looking at the words on my sheet here, so, you know, data subjects, which are your candidates, um, you, you're unable to use automated decision making in the recruitment process. It specifically says you can't do that. So how do we overcome this? Um, well, quite simply, this is why we've called what we do the recruiting assistant. It's there to kind of help and guide. It's not actually making a decision on who you hire and who you don't hire. Okay? So again, you know, AI is there to help but you need to be very careful around compliance, particularly around automated decision-making, uh, because you might fall foul 
if you start suddenly going. And I have spoken to a couple of companies in the last um, uh, sort of two weeks who really wanted to automate everything up until the offer. And I said, look, yeah, great idea. You're going to have some problems, though, with, uh, with GDPR. I think, you know, it, it's pretty clear that machines aren't really going to replace recruiters because of that human intervention. But they're going to support, you know, support the sort of the process of getting to, getting to that point. And this is really sort of, I just want to wrap up by sort of talking about the evolution of the recruiting function and sort of talk a little bit of features about you. Um, recruiters are concerned about being replaced by automation. Okay, it's happening. I mean, you just go on the blogs, you see this stuff happening all the time. But um, the idea is to use AI to, to as, as, as I've expressed, you know, take away a lot of that manual administration. Just surface the candidates to the top who look like the best fit. Spend more time on engaging with candidates, engaging with your business and the value-added uh, value areas. And um, Sarah Wilson, who's our chief people officer, I mean, she, she put it quite well, you know, kind of along those lines, that she felt that inserting AI into the recruitment process is a huge win for talent professionals. Because instead of, and I'm reading it, you know, instead of spending their time on repetitive administrative tasks, recruiters can finally focus on the parts of the job that matters the most connecting the right jobs to the right, you know, right candidates to the right jobs. So that human element, you know, can never be done by a machine. And I think that, you know, if you're able to leverage the technology, you're going to be shifting the dial into much more of an advisory capacity to start. And we, on our table, we were talking about the need to kind of coach and educate hiring managers about how to be more, more successful in that sort of hiring process. And, um, you know, the final thing, you know, which we sort of touched on is that, that ability to kind of remove, remove that bias um, fr from the selection process as well. Um, through using artificial intelligence, it matches and brings stuff to the surface and presents it in front of you. Okay, and being, being an ex-recruiter, you know, wading through CVs, you know, in an inbox used to be really painful because you'd go have 100 CVs to go through and it's the last CV which actually is the best candidate. And how many times have you as a recruiter gone, right, I've got three. I've got three for my shortlist, and you haven't looked at the rest. Okay? You might, may have missed some significantly better fit uh, bit candidates.